Paul Denier was born on April 14, 1972 to British immigrant parents in Campbelltown, New South Wales, a suburb in Australia. When moving to a new town, he had difficulty fitting in, which led to problems in his studies and self-confidence. At 11, he cut the throat of a family cat before hanging it in a tree. At 13, he was arrested for stealing a car but was let go with a warning. At age 15, he was arrested for beating up a fellow classmate. After school, he had problems maintaining a job, having been fired seven times. He even failed the physical part when applying to become a police officer. At age 20 to 21, Paul began stalking and attacking multiple women in and around the Melbourne suburb of Frankston during a five-month period in 1993. The first known incident occurred in February 1993. After making an anonymous threatening call to Donna Vaines, she fled the house with her newborn baby for an hour. When she returned, she witnessed a disastrous scene in her apartment. One of her cats had been slaughtered, with blood and intestines all over the floor. Two more cats had their throats slashed and left floating in the bathtub. Pornographic photos were left all over the place, and written in the cat's blood above the stove were the words, Donna, you're dead. Paul's first murder was that of 18-year-old Elizabeth Stevens. On Friday, June 11, Paul grabbed her from behind and threatened her with what looked like a gun. She was told to shut up or she would get shot, then was escorted to a local park. There, she was strangled, stabbed, and had her throat cut. Her killer then stomped viciously on her face, breaking several of her facial bones. She was murdered just over 800 feet from her house. A month later, on Thursday, July 8th, 22-year-old Deborah Freem was abducted in a car in the evening. Paul snuck in her unlocked vehicle and waited for her in the back seat. A farmer found her body just four days later, partially covered by the fields. She had been strangled, savagely slashed, and had her throat cut out as well. A few weeks after that, on July 30th, Paul's third and final victim was 17-year-old Natalie Russell. She was attacked while walking home from John Paul College. During this period, media speculation was rampant, public fear was intensified, and her school had issued warnings. At 8 p.m., Natalie was reported missing. A police search soon found her body in a shrub after being dragged through a hole in the fence. She had died in a similar manner to the others. She is believed to have put up a fight before her death, with forensic investigators finding skin and hair traces on her, not belonging to the victim. A postal worker had reported a rusty car with a suspicious person inside, viewing people through a pair of binoculars. Detectives traced this license plate number to Paul Denier's apartment. He was taken to Frankston Police Station in July 31, 1993, and videotaped his interview beginning at 9.20. Suspecting that the police already had DNA evidence on him, he willingly had his DNA collected and began to confess to the murders. He admitted to have been stalking women in Frankston for years, and his motivation came from a desire to kill since the age of 14, and his pure hatred of girls and women. Paul was charged with three counts of murder and sentenced to three life terms. Psychologists examined Paul, noting a lack of emotion regarding the crimes, diagnosing him with sadistic personality disorder, but not insane. He admitted being influenced to kill by the 1987 slasher film, The Stepfather. Ten years later, in November 2003, Paul began identifying as a woman named Paula. He began wearing women's clothing and cosmetics in prison, but was ultimately rejected for gender reassignment surgery. He had claimed he had never felt like he was a man, and that these feelings of gender dysphoria are what led him to seek revenge against women by murdering them. In May 2023, he was denied parole. Should he have been denied parole? What about his gender reassignment in jail? Let us know in the comments below. Sub, share, you know what to do. <laughs> Thanks for watching.